It's the dead of winter. The plains are silent, under a blanket of snow. The wind biting hard enough to sting your skin. Your breath fogs instantly in the air, and the temperature is so low that even touching metal would freeze your fingers in seconds. Now imagine not stepping into a log cabin, not a stone house, not even a canvas tent, but a teepee, a conical frame covered in hides, standing like a lone sentinel against the frozen horizon. Most people today think of teepees as drafty, thin-walled structures, temporary camps that must have been miserable in the winter. It is much Surely it was here. freezing in there, right? Surely the people who lived in these had to just suffer through the cold until the cold. spring came. But here's where history turns the tables. The teepee wasn't just a shelter. It was an engineered environment. A living, breathing space designed with such intelligence that it could stay surprisingly warm, even in brutal, sub-zero conditions. And the secret wasn't just a big fire in the middle. The real genius lay above your head and at your feet, in the ventilation system. Yes, ventilation, the very thing we associate with cooling, actually made the teepee warmer. Indigenous builders mastered the art of airflow, letting in just enough oxygen for the fire, channeling fresh air along the walls instead of across the sleepers, and pulling smoke up and out without losing precious heat. When done right, the teepee didn't just survive the winter, it thrived in it. Inside could be 60 or 70 degrees warmer than outside, with fresh, breathable air and no smoke choking your lungs. In this video, we're going to break this down in detail. We'll look at the smoke flaps, the inner liner, the ground skirt, and the fire itself, showing how each piece worked together to turn a simple hide tent into a climate-controlled microhome. And along the way, we'll uncover lessons that are still useful today for campers, off-gridders, and anyone who wants to live closer to nature without sacrificing comfort. So get ready to throw out what you thought you knew about primitive housing. The teepee was no crude shelter. It was an elegant solution to a problem that still challenges architects today. How do you heat a space, keep it ventilated, and make it comfortable using nothing but natural materials. Let's step inside the teepee, sit by the fire, and watch how the air moves. Because the secret to staying warm in winter starts with learning how to breathe. Winter on the Great Plains wasn't just cold, it was punishing. Temperatures could plunge below minus 30 or even minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Winds could reach hurricane force, sweeping across flat, treeless landscapes. Snow could pile high and drift into any unsealed opening. For nomadic peoples like the Lakota, Blackfeet, and Cheyenne, who followed bison herds year-round, staying put in one permanent stone house wasn't an option. They needed a shelter that could be dismantled, moved, and reassembled quickly, but also one that could handle these extremes. This was the challenge the teepee met so brilliantly. Its cone shape naturally resisted wind, deflecting gusts around rather than against it. Its sloping sides shed snow before weight could collapse the frame. The hides used to cover it were thick, insulating, and, importantly, breathable, which prevented moisture buildup inside. But perhaps the greatest challenge wasn't just wind or snow. It's it was so smoke. If you've ever sat by a campfire in a tent or cabin with poor ventilation, you know how fast smoke can become unbearable. Without a way to remove it, people would choke before they froze. The teepee solved this problem with an adjustable smoke hole and a system of airflow that actually made the interior warmer as it stayed breathable. What makes this fascinating is that the design wasn't static. The teepee wasn't just set and forget. It was managed throughout the day. Its flaps were adjusted based on wind direction. Fires were built in different ways depending on weather. The ground liner was repositioned for maximum airflow. It was a dynamic space, an interactive relationship between people, fire, and air. So before we dive into the specific parts of this system, understand this. The teepee wasn't just a shelter. It was a living technology, 
an evolving blueprint refined over generations. At the very top of the teepee were its most important feature, the smoke flaps. These two triangular extensions of hide could be angled in multiple directions using poles, effectively turning them into adjustable vents. On calm days, they could be opened wide to let smoke escape freely. On windy days, they could be angled like sails to catch the breeze and draw smoke upward through the smoke hole, creating a natural chimney effect. This was pure physics at work. Hot air from the fire rises, creating an updraft. By tilting the smoke flaps just right, the pressure difference outside the teepee would suck the smoke up and out while simultaneously pulling fresh air in through the lower edges of the teepee. This airflow not only cleared smoke, but also kept the fire burning hotter and more efficiently. Managing the smoke flaps was almost an art form. Skilled keepers knew exactly how to position them to handle shifting winds. In storms, they could be closed most of the way to conserve heat, leaving just enough opening for safe ventilation. On still, cold nights, the flaps could be nearly shut to trap heat, while still letting minimal smoke trickle out. This level of control was the difference between a miserable, smoky tent and a warm, breathable home. It also meant the teepee could be used year-round, not just in summer camps, but through the harshest winters. If the smoke flaps were the lungs of the teepee, the inner liner was the heart. This fabric or hide wall was hung inside the teepee a few feet from the outer cover, running from the ground up to about chest height. At first glance, it might look decorative, but its purpose was critical. Here's how it worked. Cool air entered from under the outer cover of the teepee. Instead of rushing straight across the floor and chilling everyone, it traveled up between the outer wall and the inner liner. As it rose, it was warmed by the fire before reaching breathing level. By the time it entered the main living space, it was no longer freezing. It was part of a gentle convection current. This created a circulation loop. Cool air in low, warm air up high, smoke out the top. And since the liner prevented drafts at ground level, sleepers stayed warmer and didn't get blasted by cold gusts. Some teepees even had a ground skirt, an extra flap of hide tucked into the soil or weighed down with stones, to further block wind infiltration. This turned the teepee into a double-walled, insulated structure, reducing heat loss dramatically. Modern architects would call this a passive ventilation system, but to the people who lived in them, it was simply common sense, an elegant solution that made winter survival not just possible, but surprisingly comfortable. The fire inside the teepee wasn't just for cooking. It was the central heating system. Its size, shape, and placement all mattered. A fire built too big would waste wood and create too much smoke. A fire built too small wouldn't provide enough warmth. Typically, the fire was placed in the exact center of the teepee, on a carefully prepared hearth. Stones might be arranged around it to hold heat and radiate warmth long after the flames died down. In extremely cold weather, coals were banked under ash overnight to preserve them for easy rekindling in the morning. People slept with their feet pointing toward the fire and heads toward the wall, allowing everyone to share warmth evenly. Firewood was kept close enough to be replenished during the night without fully waking. Fire management was a skill every member of the household learned. Children were taught to add small sticks carefully. Women monitored smoke patterns while cooking, and men often adjusted smoke flaps before dawn. This constant interaction with the fire made the teepee a living system, part architecture, part partnership with the elements. The materials used to build a teepee were as important as its shape. Originally, teepees were covered with buffalo hides, thick, warm, and naturally water-resistant. These hides breathed just enough to let moisture escape, preventing condensation from dripping inside, yet held heat remarkably well. When hides became scarce, and later when canvas was introduced, people noticed the difference. Canvas teepees worked, but often lacked the same insulating quality. Still, the principle remained the same, 
a material that could hold warmth but let just enough air through to keep the interior fresh. This balance between insulation and breathability is something modern green builders still strive for. Too airtight and you get moisture problems. Too leaky and you lose heat. The teepee nailed that balance centuries ago. What made a teepee truly remarkable was that it wasn't static. It responded to weather, wind, and the needs of its occupants, and they responded back. Smoke flaps were moved multiple times a day. The fire was adjusted hourly. Bedding was rearranged as temperatures dropped. This dynamic relationship made the teepee feel alive. People could hear wind shift at night and know they needed to change the flaps. They could feel the air currents stop and know the fire needed stirring. The home wasn't a sealed box. It was a collaboration between human, material, and climate. This interaction taught generations to read weather patterns intuitively, to understand airflow by feel, and to treat their shelter as a partner rather than just a container. Teepees weren't just shelters, they were gathering spaces. The warm, ventilated interior made them perfect for storytelling, ceremony, and family life during the long winter months. Children learned oral history while curled under buffalo robes. Elders shared lessons about hunting, tracking, and spirituality, while smoke curled gently toward the smoke hole. The controlled ventilation meant fires could burn safely for hours without filling the space with choking smoke, a feat many modern campers still struggle to achieve. This made the teepee a place of comfort and connection, even in the harshest conditions. The teepee's design was efficient, not just thermally, but economically. It used relatively few materials compared to building a cabin, could be moved easily with a horse or dog travelway, and could be repaired quickly if damaged. Because it stayed warmer with less fuel, it also conserved firewood, a critical resource in the treeless plains of winter. This meant less time spent gathering wood in dangerous blizzards and more energy saved for hunting and caring for the community. In many ways, the teepee was a perfect blend of minimalism and performance, a low-tech solution with high efficiency. What's striking is how much of teepee ventilation design mirrors modern architectural principles. Passive airflow, stack effect heating, breathable walls, adjustable vents, these are all features of cutting-edge, sustainable buildings today. Glamping sites, eco-lodges, and off-grid tiny homes often borrow directly from TP concepts. Architects look at these traditional designs not as relics, but as inspiration for how to live lightly on the land while staying comfortable. This isn't just nostalgia. It's science. The TP remains one of the most efficient portable dwellings ever created. The TP stands as proof that technology doesn't have to be digital to be brilliant. Every flap, pole, and liner was optimized over generations through observation and practice. The result was a home that could be warm, dry, and safe in conditions that would kill the unprepared. For the native peoples of the plains, this wasn't just survival. It was dignity. It allowed families to thrive, celebrate, and rest through the long winter nights. And today, when we marvel at their knowledge, we're reminded that ancient doesn't mean crude. It often means perfected. So, how did Native Americans master teepee ventilation for brutal winters? They combined perfect geometry, breathable materials, intelligent airflow design, and constant human interaction to turn a simple conical structure into a warm, smoke-free, energy-efficient home. The next time you think about roughing it in the cold, remember that indigenous peoples had this figured out centuries ago, and they did it with style, precision, and sustainability we're still trying to replicate. If this deep dive opened your eyes to the brilliance of TP design, hit the like button so more people can learn about it. Subscribe for more explorations into ancient technology, forgotten survival skills, and sustainable wisdom from the past. And drop a comment. Which feature of the teepee impressed you most? The smoke flaps? The inner liner? Or just the fact that a group of people could stay cozy at negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit in a portable hide home? 
Share this with someone who loves camping or engineering. They'll never look at a tent the same way again.